Okay, this is our last video of class. This is the last chapter we're going to cover. And this is the last class most of you are going to be taking. So this is this is exciting. So we're going to cover uh, chapter 12 this week. And then next week, the beginning of the week will be a review video. So a week from today, uh, or maybe Monday, uh, today's Sunday. Um, and then I'll have to plan when we can take the exam based on when the class is over. So I'll have to still that's still to be announced, okay? So this chapter, we're only gonna cover the first couple of sections here, and, and it's dealing with the, the issue we had last chapter. Last chapter, chapter 11, we talked about that there are limits to what we can do algorithmically, okay? But it turns out, unsurprisingly, that just because a problem's not easy to solve doesn't mean that you don't have to deal with it. You can just, you know, you can just punt, okay? Uh, for example, things such as the uh, knapsack problem have um, applications in loading planes or trucks or ships to, to move different places. And the traveling salesman problem certainly is going to be uh, of concern to anyone in the, the logistics field where you're trying to have trucks or other things move from place to place. Okay, So we have to have strategies that we can solve on these problems that are not very uh, easy to solve, that there's no good algorithm to do it, okay? And the two techniques we're gonna talk about, the first one's called backtracking, and the second one's called branch and bound, okay? So these are similar problems, okay? And that um, what we're trying to do is that we're trying to find a way to get to uh, a reasonable solution in a reasonable amount of time, okay? So both of these um, are gonna be a, a big improvement over just the brute force exhaustive search. Okay, so uh, you could with the knapsack problem, for example, try every combination of items. Okay, and in a small case, you certainly could, but in a big case, that's just not realistic. So these are better than that, okay? So both of these end up being based on this idea of a space a state space tree, okay? So where we're going to track choices that we're making and we're going to try to uh, optimize our process as we go, okay? Uh, the only real difference between them is that the backtracking works in a wide variety of problems, okay? Uh, where the branch and bound works particularly on optimization problems, okay? And it, it's gonna cause a difference between a depth first and a breadth first approach to things, okay? But that's the basic idea, okay? So with the backtracking again, <clears throat> um, it's looking at problems that we often run into where we have an element that has a special property um, in a domain that grows exponentially fast with the size of the problem's input, okay? We can look at the Hamiltonian circuit where we can leave from one vertex, go to the, all the others and come back to where we came from, okay? We could look at the knapsack problem, uh, the, the most valuable subset of items, okay? All these problems, okay? So, as we talked about in last chapter, there, there are reasons that we believe that these problems may not have a polynomial time solution, okay? Uh, and they all can be solved, uh, at least theoretically, with exhaustive search, okay? So the exhaustive search then is where you go through and you find all candidate solutions and then figure out which one has the, the most desired property, okay? So backtracking then becomes a smart approach of doing this, okay? So we're going to construct solutions one at a time, find some algorithmic way to do that, okay? Then we're gonna evaluate and see if we've gone too far at some point, okay? So if there are no legitimate options for the next phase, then we're gonna mark that as a dead end and go back to where we still had options, okay? So again, we're going to implement this with a state space tree. So the root is the initial state before any choices are made, okay? Um, and then the nodes of the second level make, or the, the first choice that people make, okay? And then the, the third level becomes second choice and so forth, okay? So a node in this tree is said to be promising if it corresponds to a partially constructed solution that could still lead to a complete solution, okay? If not, we're gonna call it a non-promising or we're gonna, where it's gonna be a dead end, okay? So as an example, we're gonna start with the in Queens problem that we've talked about this before. Okay, so um, with this one, you wanna place n queens on an n by n chessboard so that no queens, uh, no two queens can attack each other by being in the same row or the same column, okay? 
And in this particular version, we're wanting to place a queen in each row. Okay, that's the question there. Okay. Um, so as it says here, if n is equal to one, uh, there's only one place for a queen. So that's a trivial solution. There's no solution for two or three. You can't place a uh, queen on each row with any kind of way there. Okay. So we're going to look at the four queens problem as an example. So at the bottom of the page here, it shows the four by four, it, you know, four queens it will be the n by n or four by four. Okay. And we want to place a queen on each row. Okay. So we're going to start there by putting a queen in the first position, okay, which is one, one, okay. Then we're gonna place queen two, okay, queen two. So I'll try to, if you can see my mouse here. Uh, and are there pictures of that? There may be pictures of that. Yeah, okay. So in this case, we're going to look at putting a queen in this first position here, okay? So we're then trying to put one in the second row, okay? We try here, in the, in the first row or the first column, and it can't because that is in the same um, column and two is in the same diagonal, so that doesn't work. But we could put it in three. Three doesn't cause any issues there, okay? So that's what we're doing here at two, okay? So this is depth first, we're gonna keep going down, okay? From here, we can't put it here because it's blocked by the first queen. We can't put it there, it's a diagonal here. We can't put it here because it's in a row or a column here. We can't put it there because it's in a diagonal. Okay, so um, all of these are out. So this is a dead end. Okay, so we go back up to here. We tried one, we tried two, um, we tried three, three didn't work. Okay, so now we're going to the fourth. Okay, and these numbers are off. This should be a, uh, oh no, they're not. Uh, these are, this is box numbers. That's where we're at. This is the first, second. This is a zero, first, second. This is the, the third time we're doing it. Okay. So in this case, we're now moving the other option here. We tried here, didn't work. This didn't work. This didn't work. Now we're going to go here. Okay. So from this one, for the third row here, one is still out. Okay. It still has a conflict with that. Okay. Two is okay. Uh, so two will take two. Again, we don't go any further. We have one that works. We go down to here. We've got one to two, okay? And now we see that this is out because the diagonal and also it's in a row here. This is out, it's in a column here. That's a diagonal, that's a column there. That's a dead end, okay? Go back up to here, back up to there. We've looked at all the options there, back up to here, okay? So putting the queen in the first row didn't help, but it, a second, sorry, sorry, second column. First column didn't work, try the second column. Okay, so here, going back to row two, this is out, that's out, that's out because they're either directly in line or a diagonal. All we have is this, this one, okay? So that works. So now we go to the next one, okay? Oh, went too far. Can't use both the mouse and keypad. There we go, okay. So we're, we're here, okay, and we can successfully, um, on the third row, we can put one now in the first row, okay, and that's okay, okay, that doesn't cause any trouble. We try one, no, we try two, no, three is okay, so we go to three here, okay, and from three, okay, um, we find that we have our solution, okay, this is a solution that works. Would four work as well? It doesn't, but we don't, I mean, because it's gonna interrupt here, but it doesn't matter because we already found our solution. Okay, so that, that's how that works. That's the idea, okay? Another example here that I'm not gonna go through it in as much detail, but it's just the idea of, this is the Hamiltonian circuit problem. Okay, so we're gonna start from A. It doesn't matter where you start in a Hamiltonian circuit, you can start from any vertex, okay? And you see that we're gonna go in lexicographic order here, A to B, okay, so we go A to B, uh, to C, to D, to E, to F first. Okay, that's what these numbers are. We go all the way here before we realize that no, we can't go anywhere. We're at a dead end. Okay. So at that point, we have to back back up to where we had an option. Okay. So 
if we back up to E, we can see that our only options F, which we've already tried, okay, and there's nothing else we can get, we've already been to C. So we back up again to the D, okay, we still have no options that are not already in, in the list before. The A and, and the C are both already there. So the first time we have an options, we go back to C. We went from C to D, but we can also go C to E. That's okay. We go C to E and then E to D, find a dead end, or E to F, there's a dead end there as well. Okay. The, so the, the only, only time we had an option was back at B. So if we went A to B to F, okay, we then lexicographically could go to E. Actually, it didn't matter lexicographically. From F, the only option is E. We then could go C or D, but we pick C and then D and finally back to A, and that's our solution. Okay, so that's how backtracking is going to work. There's also a problem here with a, a, a subset sum problem. We've got a list of numbers and we want to find some answer, okay? So this one, we have a, a list of a three, five, six, and seven. We want to see if there's a subset that equals 15. So we start by saying either with three or without three, that's our first element, okay? And then we keep going with three, with five, up until we hit a problem. And do the same thing until we find our solution. Okay, so that's how that's going to work. Here's some exercises, and I'll give one or two of these. So the other thing we're gonna talk about is this branch and bound. So the branch and bound adds the idea that we can, it's, it's gonna be for optimization problems. So we can figure out the potential value of the tree that we're on or the branch that we're on, okay? So to try to find an optimal solution, okay? So what's different from the backtracking is we're going to have some way um, that we can figure out the best solution that can be obtained where we're at moving forward, okay? And we'll also have to track the best solution we've seen so far, okay? So um, unlike the depth first with, with that we did before looking for a solution, this time we're gonna do a breadth first. At each step, we're gonna take all of our options, evaluate which gives the best optimal value and keep moving forward, okay? So it's a little bit different kind of a problem. So in this first example, we have this assignment problem. And the assignment problem is that we have four jobs, one, two, three, four, and four people, A, B, C, D. Each of them can do the job at a different cost, okay? And they have to all be done at the same time. So we have to have a correspondence of one person to one job, okay? So when we look at this, um, the we're gonna go person by person. The person can only do one job. So the best that we can get, okay, is gonna be uh, the lowest for each row, a two here, a three here, a one there, and a four there, okay? So 10 is going to be, um, the lower bound on the problem, okay? So we can start with that, 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 that as of, at this first step here, the lower bound then becomes the 10, okay? And then we're gonna go through, at this first step, we're going to assume that A takes either job one, job two, job three, or job four. Okay, we do these at the same time, well, sequentially. We don't, we don't go any further down the tree until we've got this taken care of, okay? So, if, for example, person A takes job one, okay, then what we have remaining here for person B to do is a three, one, four, okay? So we get the nine that we picked because that's what person one does job one with four. And then that's the three, one, four, not mattering if they're, these are both the same job, but we don't care about that, okay? So that's what gets us to here. 
And similarly, if person A takes job two, that was a two, and then the three, one, four is still the lowest. Um, if person A takes, takes job three, that's a seven. We're left with a four, five, four for the other rows. If person A takes a four, then we have the eight for that one and a three, one, six for the other, okay? So if we look at these, um, we can see which one is the best, and that's gonna be letting A take job two, okay? So from here, we go on to the next level. So we've already assumed A is taking two. So now we're looking at person B. They take one, they take um, job three, they can't take two, and job four. We calculate the lower bounds the same way as we did before. Okay, we know that the A is going to have, um, the, it was two, right? So yeah, A was two. So B, the first time will be a six, then it'll be a one, and then it will be, um, no, a six, they take job one, a four, they can't take job two, uh, a th three if they take job three, and a seven if they take job four, okay? And we calculate which of those turns out to be the best option, okay? We get a 13, we get a 14, we get a 17, okay? So from that, we're going to assume that A takes job two, B takes job um, one. That's the, the one that's the um, most straight, the lowest value, okay? We then look to see person, at this point, it, it's it, whatever C takes, D takes the other. So we look at the two options there. If C, again, we're assuming that A takes two, B takes one, okay. Um, C takes three, D takes four, or the reversed, we see that the best solution is if C takes three and D takes four, okay. Again, in a really big problem, this would be difficult, okay. Another example of this is the knapsack problem. With this, you have a knapsack that can hold 10 in weight. Then you have four items with different weights and different values. And then you get this value to weight ratio, okay? And with that, you're just gonna go through, do you include item one? Do you include um, item two and so forth to find your solution, okay? The last example we have is a tra traveling salesman problem. Okay, with this graph, okay, and again, um, we're starting at A, so we look at the ways A can go, okay. A can go, um, you can go AB, that's valid. We can go AC, AD, or AE, okay. We go and calculate um, all of the ways that we can get the lower bound for that problem to get our optimal solution. That's how much for that problem, okay? So the other sections, just, just to mention them briefly here, okay? Um, we're gonna look for approximation algorithms in 12.3, which again, we're not gonna cover, but you can take a look at it if you like. It's a way if you don't have to solve it exactly, but you just have to way to get close. Okay, and then I think there's a 12.4 here. Maybe somewhere. That's a long section. Glad we're not doing it. Okay. Yeah, twelve four is uh, solving nonlinear equations. Okay. So again, this is stuff that, that we're not going to cover. Okay. But it's not bad stuff. You can sort of look at that if you have an interest in such things. Okay. And um, that's the book, right? So we've covered everything except I think eight and 10, it seems like, which at a time, I think the ones we covered were more interesting, okay? So um, I'll put the problem set out either later today or maybe tomorrow. Um, and if you have questions, of course, I'll put a, a forum out there that you can uh, post questions to. You can text me if you need to. Uh, and of course, we'll have our regular Zoom on Thursday at seven. Okay, so that, that should do it for this, this week.